Hi, my name is Ian Kinder. Welcome to the Live Safe Academy show. I'm the owner and founder of Live Safe Academy, which is a safety and self-defense school. So we specialize in the training of first aid, assault and crime prevention, unarmed self-defense, chemical defense sprays, sharp weapons, impact weapons, tasers and gun training from I never touched a gun before to a, I want a concealed pistol license to far beyond what a concealed pistol license course would teach. And we have everything from in-person classes in the Detroit, Michigan area to live virtual classes that you can participate in from anywhere in the world. And today I'm very proud to introduce uh, or give notice to a, an announcement that Lou Kyoto is having his book put back into print. And so I'm gonna bring him on here and he's gonna talk about his book. And then we're gonna have all the information to get the book in the video description and in the podcast description. So always check the show notes and see that information there. And Lou, for those who don't know you, can you give a little bit of your background? Good morning, Ian, and to all, all those that are viewing the video. Um, my my background is, is really in three major places. One. I've been a lifelong martial artist, started when I was about nine years old. That's 58 years ago that I've been involved in teaching martial arts. Um, my second way of getting involved into, into training issues was via my uh, commissioning into the uh, US Marine Corps. I uh, spent approximately 10 years there. Um, and upon completion of my, my duties there, I was accepted into law enforcement uh, in the California Highway Patrol. And I spent uh, approximately 23 years there. Um, was able to work graveyard shift for that time. But in addition to that, I was intimately involved in developing our weapons training programs that we use statewide. Um, I was able to uh, get all the material that I had was developing into programs that went to everybody in my agency. Uh, but then I also was able to uh, bring all of that into my private company, which is Gunfighters Limited Combat Shooting Methods Incorporated. So I was able to work along an entire spectrum of, of different entities and further develop as, as time went on. So now I'm able to, uh, to be able to work in and out of law enforcement um, I do training within the CCW community um, and still have done uh, some work with uh, military members also. So Lou, let's talk about the title of the book and then give us an overview of the book and some of the history of the book. Sure. Well, the title of the book is Winning a High-Speed Close Distance Gunfight. Um, the, the genesis of the book came from a promise that I had made to one of my mentors which is Colonel Rex Applegate. Um, Colonel Applegate was uh, one of the premier people during World War II that was developing training, and particularly for the OSS during that time. Um, and he was linked directly with W.E. Fairburn, uh, who started in Shanghai, China, um, and also uh, brought his methodology into World War II uh, to the British military and also into ours. So, um, I was able to, um, as, as conversation with Colonel Applegate, I had made him uh, two promises that I, I, I've held to, uh, and, and I was with him when he passed away here in uh, 1998 in uh, San Diego. And those promises evolved around keeping the physical end of training going. Now was the methodology um, and expanding as much as I could and teach as many people as I could uh, as time passed on. And that, that was one of the reasons why I started my company because it gave me a platform to do that. Um, and having that platform, I've been able to not only uh, teach people within approximately 186 uh, uh, police agencies nationwide, but I've also uh, trained people from all five continents through some of the uh, training programs that I've been involved in. Um, the second thing that I wanted to do and a promise to him was, was to be able to put all the material about why we train the way we do into a format of a book so that people could not only learn the methodology, but learn why we do that methodology. 
So to link the two of them is very critical because oftentimes people are taught things, but really they have no clue about why, why they're even being taught this way. They don't really understand that maybe what they're being taught doesn't link with the way their mind and body is going to work in the conditions of combat that they're going to face. And that leads to training failures. So what I wanted to do is, is in this book, be able to lay open for them uh, a, a way of reading about why it is we do certain things in training and maybe why we won't do other things in training because what we don't want to have happen is put that valuable training time into things that just may not work for us. And we've seen that happen in many places where, you know, it's been called state of the art training and people do things. And then next thing you know, they get in a gunfight and it doesn't work. Um, and what we want people to understand about their training is what should they be doing and why maybe not do things that might not be as productive. So we go into a discussion of this in the book so that they learn about the sympathetic nervous system and how it affects training. Um, and, and that's a real critical thing to understand and understand why it affects maybe the shooting methodology that you're using. So as an overview to it, that's, that's pretty much what we want to try to accomplish in the book. So let me give you an example to the people who are watching this video, who are listening to this podcast. Go back and watch the original UFC. Now, this is a sports an, an analogy, but it really makes the point. What you saw were a lot of different training methods that were going into this, this full contact fighting in this new format that they were using in the UFC. And a lot of the training methods that people were using to go into that format just didn't work. They thought it was going to work. There was a lot of belief that it was going to work. But when they actually got into the octagon, it didn't work for them at all. And that was a good way of vetting those type of training methods for that type of sport environment. And that concept is really critical because we don't want to be spending time on training methods that aren't going to be working in the environment that we're going to have to apply them. Now, that's just a sports and analogy, but the concept is the same for combat. We want to have methods that have the best possible chance of success. So, Lou, if you can tell me, what is the objective of this book? All right. Well, the objective of the book is kind of in line with, with what you just said. We want people to be able to objectively look at what they're doing in their training and have an understanding before they have to apply that training for, for purposes of self-defense, which is really why we, we're, we're training in the first place, to, to understand if what they're even doing has any application to the environment that they're going to find themselves in. Because what, what I have found in, in training a lot of people is they've gone to places to try to learn things. Um, they've gone to different schools. They follow certain people. They, they try to incorporate different things into their training. But the problem is, is that a lot of it has really, it's not tested. And it's not tested by them personally to see if it even works for them in the way, way that they could either manipulate their weapon or, or their mindset and, and, and things of that nature. So one of the objectives is through the entire book, we're, we're constantly going back to this concept of evaluating what you're doing. As an example, you know, we know because we've done a lot, of, a lot of collaborative training, particularly doing force on force drilling and then scenario based training. And we get people that have been trained to do certain things and there are sometimes people that have spent time doing this. They go to the range. They, they diligently practice. And within the first second, second and a half, or whatever we're drilling we're doing with them or whatever scenarios that we're running with them, whatever they were doing falls flat on its face. But then when we, we get them to objectively look at that, and then we, in the physical end of training, allow them to learn methods that now they can go into that same environment and have something that works. Well, unless they've questioned their training in the first place and they've tested it, how are they going to know if it even is going to work for them? Oftentimes people come up short because it really hasn't been tested. Um, 
you know, we, we do analogies of, you, you know, you, you go in there and you learn how to hit a heavy bag. But then the first time that you walk in the ring with someone, you find out real quick that maybe just hitting the heavy bag isn't everything that you need. And maybe a lot of things that you thought were going to happen a certain way just don't. I, I've seen that not only in, the, in the, the, the weapons training community, but you see that all the time in, in, in the, the, the martial arts, defensive tactics type training that we, we do with people. That, yeah, they got, they got a plan and they've been training on that plan and they've devoted their training time for the mechanics to do that particular training that they're doing. But then in short order, they find out it just fell right on his face. And what we want people to do when they're reading this book is to reflect on what they're doing in training. If, if they're learning something about how the mind and body works when the sympathetic nervous system is activated and they they've have now knowledge that, well, maybe, you know, breathe, relax, aim, slack, squeeze, maybe being able to visually bring their eyes off the threat and come back and focus on a front sight might not be something that they're going to be able to accomplish when the person is 10, 12 feet away from them and already engaging them, whether it's with the firearm or present, you know, a, an edge weapon or whatever the system that they're using. Well, you find out really quick when you get thrown into that environment that maybe some of these things you were planning on just might not work. So we have to substitute that with something that does. But if you've never questioned it, how are you going to know whether or not it's even valid or not? If you never take it in an environment where you test it, how are you going to know? So we try to lead people to that type of understanding so that as they're training, they do this type of evaluation. Yeah, and this is another sports type of, of an analogy and sport and combat are not the same, but a lot of the, the, the feedback that you get, though, is still honest in regard to how is this training going to work in the environment that I want to apply it. So you brought up a great example, you know, you can be really good at hitting the heavy bag. And that can help you fight better in the ring, but hitting the heavy bag doesn't mean you're going to be good at fighting in the ring. You've got to get in the ring and you've got to learn how to apply your skills when somebody's trying to hit you back. Like Bruce Lee famously said, boards don't hit back, right? It's a whole different show when somebody's hitting you back. Uh, an analogy for the average shooter out there is they might go to the range and look really good on their paper targets. But if you take those methods and you go play airsoft and you try to apply those methods in airsoft, you might I find that you're getting shot a lot more than you are shooting other people. Now, again, that's just a sport. It's not to say airsoft, playing airsoft is like the real thing, but you will get some honest feedback there in regard to how your methods are working when it comes to shooting other people and not getting shot in the process. Of course, the best way to vet all this stuff is force on force training with instructors who are properly trained and understand the methods so that they can give you the most realistic encounter possible and help you apply the proper methods to the environment you're most likely to be in. But let's talk a little bit more about how the people can get the book if they want it. Now, remember in the video description, and in the podcast description, there's going to be a link for people to pre-order the book or once the book goes to print to order the book. But just let's kind of say it out loud for people. How can they order the book, Lou? Sure. Well, all they'll need to do, it's, it's a real simple process. www.snubnoir.com. If, if they go to that website, it's going to pop right in front of them and they'll be able to uh, order it right there. So it's a real simple process. And like you say, uh, it'll, it'll also be included in the, um, uh, in, in what you put out and also uh, in, in any links that go out via the company producing it. I, I have included it in, uh, in my Facebook page, uh, which would just be Lou Kyoto. You see a picture of me holding a, holding a handgun out, that'll be me. And it's right in there. And it's a real simple, simple process to order it. Great. And you have a website also, and that information is going to be on your website. What is your web address, Lou? Uh, the web address is www.gunfightersltd.com. And over the next day or two, that, that should be included into, into my website also. 
Great, excellent. Then if folks want to know how to get it, they've got all of the information in the video description. They're going to have it in the podcast description. Is there anything else that you want to mention about the book for potential, uh, you know, for people that are going to buy the book and they want to know what they're going to get or for people that are considering buying the book? Sure. Well, I, I think it's very important in, in any kind of training evolution that you're doing, whether it's being taught unarmed combat, whether it's firearms training, for, for you to, to know what to look for so that you can do that honest evaluation. I've, I've laid out in the book what you need to do to be able to accomplish that. And, and for a lot of people, they've never really sat down and figured this stuff out. Um, you know, they're in, in, in the whole firearms training community and in the shooting community, um, I think you had mentioned that, you know, people oftentimes either don't train a lot or sometimes they don't train really at all. Or the training that they have received, they've never viewed it from the standpoint of where it realistically has to be applied. And so what we try to do in the book is give you that tool to be able to objectively look at what you're doing. And I, I can't emphasize that point enough because I've seen a lot of people be brought down the wrong road and they're doing drilling and stuff on the range that really has no applicability to live combat, but they're relying on that to say that they're ready to go. And if you don't test it, you don't know if you're ready to go. In the book, I, I cover about where force on force training is going to be a critical thing for you to try to do in your training uh, because that is other than getting in a live gunfight, drilling these methods that we teach or whatever method you've been taught is where you learn how to apply it. And then when you go into scenario-based training, that's where you take that sum total of the mechanical things that you've learned, learning how to apply them in drilling, and then actually applying them in an open environment where you don't know what's gonna happen. That kind of seals a loop of training because we've got to be taught how to do something and it has to be valid. Then you have to drill it so that your body learns how to do it and link with your mind, psychomotor skill development. And then you have to seal all of that with going into unknown environments. For, for anybody that worked in law enforcement, any type of job where you're doing, where you're, work, where you're constantly walking into the unknown, there's where you really find out why it's so important for this process to happen because you know for for some of the military people that might be out there some of the law enforcement people out there anybody that's been a victim of a crime is, is going to probably tell you what i'm going to say right here that this stuff explodes in your face at warp speed and what you come up with it as initial response is what you're going to live with and if you've put baloney and bs into your training that's probably what's going to come out this book will help you to decipher what's valid and what you probably need to set aside. And I think that is, is something that it, it's, a, it, it's a tool that everybody needs to do so that you can actually get to the true things that you need to in your training. Yeah, that's so essential because the reality is, well, most people don't don't ever train, but other people who do train, they usually have very little training and even people who train a lot, it's never as, as much as we would want it to be, right? Because we have other things that we have to do. So whatever amount of time we dedicate to training, we need that training to have the greatest potential to give us a positive outcome based on the circumstances we're most likely to face. This is no different than when you make an investment, right? You want that investment to have the greatest potential to return back to you the greatest amount of money. And when you do training, you're going to invest into time that you want to give the greatest potential for a positive outcome, again, depending on the circumstances that you're most likely to face. So just like you'd be very selective about uh, mutual funds or stocks or investments that you're going to make and that you want the best return on that, you also want the best return on the training that you're going to do. And in both cases, you're going to have limited resources and you want those limited resources that had the best potential for a positive payoff. And that's all we're talking about here. So this book originally was one that you self-published, 
then was picked up by Paladin Press. Paladin Press, many people are, are familiar with. They were famous for a long time, but unfortunately they went out of business. You then got the book rights back and now this new publisher has contacted you and they've told you that they feel it's really important to put this book back in print again and they're very strong believers in your message. Um, Ed, Ed is a, a personal friend of mine, um, one, of the, one of the best people in the business. He's, he's wrote a, a, a book on the snubby revolver, and he's considered to be one, one of those uh, premier experts in that particular system and its application. Um, and his book is also being printed by, by Snub Nor, uh, the company that's doing mine. Uh, what, what I think is important, or what, why I, I mentioned, mentioned him, is because I, I feel um, very honored that he took the time to write the forward in the book to, to outlay again, why it's a valuable tool for someone to use in their, in, in their development of their personal training. Uh, so I was, I was really happy to, uh, to see that happen. Yeah, that's excellent. Well, if, I really encourage people to go out and get this book. It's a phenomenal resource. You can go read the reviews on Amazon. It's a it, You could uh, learn more about Lou by watching the videos and the podcast where I featured him. It's just a phenomenal resource, and I encourage everyone to get it. Whether you're a martial artist, if you're a gun owner, if you have to use a gun in a, in a professional setting because you're military, law enforcement, or your private security, or just if you're concerned about your own personal safety, the safety of your loved ones. This is a very important book to add to your library. Read it, enjoy, understand it. And you also have the opportunity to learn from Lou directly. Lou now does live virtual classes that you can partic participate in from anywhere in the world. They're phenomenal programs and you can take those programs right through us. And information for that is also always in the video description or in the podcast description. And if you feel that the material that we put out is helpful, you can help us help you and other people too with a couple really simple steps. Go out to our YouTube channel, Live Safe Academy, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell, then like our videos, leave comments. Those are all things that will get us into the search engines so we, our videos and information can be available to more people. Go out to our podcast, subscribe to our podcast, rate our podcast because that helps us get into the search engines so we can reach and help more people. Then always go to livesafeacademy.com forward slash connect where you have access to all of our podcasts, our videos, our articles, our in-person classes, which are mostly in the Detroit, Michigan area, and our live virtual classes that you can participate in from anywhere in the world. And that information, livesafeacademy.com forward slash connect is also in the video and the podcast description. Lou, do you have any last thoughts? No, I, I would just say, um, I hope everybody uh, that purchases the book can get the value in from purchasing it that, that I've intended. That is to give you something to analyze your training and better prepare you for the real world if you have to deploy your weapons to stay alive and to keep your family safe. And, and I, I hope you really enjoy reading it. Lou, you've dedicated your entire life to helping people. You've dedicated your entire life to protecting people through your Marine Corps service, through your law enforcement service. Uh, through your martial arts training and being an instructor through your martial arts training, as well as being an instructor uh, with firearms training. So very honored to have an opportunity to make people aware of this book. And I highly encourage everyone to read this book, include this in your library. This is a book that you're going to want. I hope everybody stays safe. Have a wonderful day. Thank you for watching this video. Listen to this podcast.